If you were locked in a room with a pair of speakers and had to choose between a sound measuring 90 decibels or one measuring 120 decibels, you'd probably pick the one with the fewer decibels. I mean, a less loud sound would surely be less painful, right? But you might have just picked the very loud sound of a crying baby over the very quiet sound of a singing whale. The reason? Decibels don't actually measure loudness. Sounds are just really rapid changes in air pressure. This wave shows the pressure changes created by a crying baby, and we can quantify the intensity of those waves, that is, their height, with a unit called decibels. Now you've probably heard of decibels, which we use in reference to everything from how loud a bar should be to how well earmuffs work. But decibels only measure the height of the sound wave. The loudness of a sound also depends on its frequency, or how fast those pressure changes are happening. Here, listen to this. You just heard all the audible frequencies at the exact same decibel level. So the height of the waves didn't change, but the loudness with which you perceived them almost certainly did. That's because for a sound to be heard, it has to wiggle some of the tiny hair cells deep inside the ear. A high sound enters the ear and resonates with the stiff hairs that wiggle rapidly, while a low sound resonates with the more bendy hairs that can move more slowly. But for reasons we won't get into, the stiffest and loosest hairs can't send as strong of a signal to the brain as the ones in between, which means that human ears are most sensitive to mid-range frequencies, like a baby's cry, but less sensitive to higher and lower pitches. Super high sounds, like the frequencies bats use to echolocate, or the super low frequencies that earthquakes make, barely register as audible because we don't have hairs for those frequencies. So no matter how many decibels those sounds have, they won't be loud to us. Okay, so if decibels don't measure loudness, why do we use them that way? The thing is, the world is full of sounds at all sorts of frequencies, but in most cases the sounds we want to measure and talk about are the ones we're sensitive to, you know, ones that are loud enough to hear or even irritate us. So generally, decibels are a good enough approximation of loudness. Unless you want to use them to measure the loudness of an echolocating bat, of course, but that would be quite a mistake. What's not unheard of is getting overwhelmed by potential career options. We all want to find fulfilling careers, and if you click the link to 80,000 hours in the description, you can get a free copy of an in-depth career guide to help you figure out exactly how to do that. 80,000 Hours is a nonprofit with a simple goal. They want to help you use your career to make a positive impact on the world, and they've spent the last 10 years working with Oxford University researchers to figure out the best way to help you make it happen. 80,000 Hours provides tons of resources like a career planning course and a continuously updated and rigorously curated job board. They will even set you up with one-on-one -on -one calls with their team of career advisors, and they do it all for free. So head over to 80,000hours.org slash to start planning your career.